This is the number one way to pay your credit card so your credit score increases every single month. This is one of the biggest and most confusing things that people struggle with is when exactly to pay their credit card so you can squeeze out every single point out of your credit score every single month. Because let's be honest, nobody taught us about credit or credit cards or even when to pay your credit card. So it's kind of confusing for just about everybody. I'll be honest with you, when I got into credit cards, I had no idea how to pay my credit card properly and that it truly affected how my credit score goes up and down and it drives people crazy. So should I pay it by the due date? by the statement opening date or the statement closing date. There's all kinds of dates that just confuse you. So on today's episode, I'm gonna break down every date and its importance and exactly when you should pay your credit card so you can squeeze out as many points out of your credit score as you can every single month consistently because that's the number one thing that everyone gets wrong. Credit is the ability to repay consistently. But before we jump into this video, make sure that you smash that like and subscribe button so this video gets out to more people so everyone can stay informed. So let's go ahead and jump into this video because I don't want this to be super long. So we're gonna do three different credit cards card statements. We're going to do one from Capital One, one from Discover, and one from Chase Bank. And I want you to see the similarities in all of them because there's one very important date that they all have in common. The number one date that everyone is laser focused in on is going to be the due date because it sounds important. Your payment due date. Make a minimum payment by this date. That only exists if you are carrying a balance every month. And if you decide to only make the minimum payment, you're going to incur interest fees. This is where your $20 turns into $25 or $30, depending on how crappy your credit card is. But your payment due date represents the previous month's balance. So if you're not carrying an actual balance from the previous month, then you actually don't have a due date. But you always want to make sure that you at least have it set to make the minimum payment on your due date every single month so you never miss a payment. Because if you get one late payment, one late payment can drop your credit score all the way down to 100 120 points. And when you set your auto payment, make sure that it is set to an ACH payment draft from your checking account, not your debit card, because some credit cards will allow you to pay with another debit card. Because let's say hypothetically, your actual debit card is compromised or you lose it or it's stolen, and then they have to issue a new one. You may forget about it, and then guess what? Your payment doesn't go through and you get a late payment. So always make sure that it is set up to make an automatic payment from an ACH payment from your checking or your savings account. Now, if you see on this Chase credit card actual app statement, it shows right there in the green bubble, next closing date. This is the date that I want you to be laser focused on. This is exactly when the credit card company is going to stop calculating any charges. It's gonna stop right here and everything is gonna be calculated to see exactly how much you actually owe and then what your balance is gonna be. Now let's put my Discover credit card up on the screen here so you can see it right here. Now this is a little bit different because this is not the app, this is an actual bank statement from Discover Bank. Now, now, as you can see in the red circle, we circled the payment due date. It is on 4 2024 But then if you go over to the little rectangular square box, I say rectangular square, not the same thing, but you know what I mean. It says 3-25-2024. Now we want to make sure that we target in on that, what we call statement closing date. Remember, the last date on your statement is your statement closing date. The other date in the beginning is when it starts to begin to actually calculate all of your new charges. Every single credit card, no matter what kind of credit card it is, you're going to see those three dates on every single statement. Now let's put the Capital One Quicksilver card up on the screen here, as you can see right there in the red rectangular box, that second date says January 20. 2nd, 2023. That's the second date that we want to focus on. So here's where it gets confusing. Everyone says this is going to be the date that's going to report to the credit reporting agencies and that's actually not true for every credit card. The credit card company is going to have three to seven days to report your balance once that statement closing date hits. So it could be on that actual date or it could be three to seven days after your statement closing date. Anytime you pay your credit card, you want to make sure that you 
giving yourself enough room so it actually pays the credit card and it reports a zero balance or as close to zero as possible. So if my statement closing date on my Discover card is going to be the 20th of every month, then, then I wanna make sure that I pay it off at least two business days before that statement closing date. Or if you wanna be safe, you can do two or three days at maximum because that's gonna give enough time for the payment for the actual payment to clear. With Discover Bank, for whatever reason, they take much longer than any other credit card company to actually process a payment because they have their own payment system in Discover Bank. And just between me and you, I'm not a big fan of Discover Bank because of this. Because when people start to use Discover, they get a little confused. They're like, why is the payment taking so long to clear? This makes no sense. And don't let a holiday get in the way because then it's gonna take even longer. But remember, the key here is to give yourself at least a two to three day window from your statement closing date. So I wanna pay my credit card with Discover Bank at least every 18th of the month. So that gives me two extra days to make sure that it actually pays off in full and then it reports zero balance. I wanna give a special shout out to all my beasters out there that are working hard to fix their credit using Dispute Beast, the most advanced AI credit repair software ever created. And specifically to Wesley, whose Wesley's credit score went up over 226 points after just two rounds with Dispute Dispute Beast and also Marcus. Marcus's credit score went up 337 points after just two rounds with Dispute Beast. And let's not forget Richard. Richard's credit score went up 446 points after just one round with Dispute Beast. Dispute Beast is going to be pinned at the very top of the comments and in the video description for anybody that needs to fix their credit. Last part's the most important. Now, if you want, you can move your statement closing date however you would like if you call and talk to your credit card company. So what I do is people always say, well, Mike, what do you do with so many credit cards? Half of my credit cards close in the beginning of the month and the other half close in the middle of the month. Because what you want to do is once that statement closing date hits, you want to stop using the credit card altogether. You wanna stop using it for three to seven days at maximum so it reports the lowest balance possible possible because the name of the game with credit is repaying consistently. So we want to consistently report as many times as we possibly can zero balance. And the biggest mistake that everyone makes is they actually pay off their credit card and they're like, well, hold on. Why is it showing that I'm reporting a balance? I paid off the entire credit card. What's going on? Well, because you paid off your credit card and then you started using it and you did not give yourself that at least three to seven day grace period of not using the credit card. Allow allowing it to report the lowest balance possible. And in my in my heart of hearts, you should always report a zero balance. Because remember, it doesn't matter what people say out there. People that are in the 800 club do not carry balances. They consistently report a zero balance and that helps level out their credit score. When you report a balance one month and then you report zero balance the next and you bounce back and forth, that's why your credit score teeter totters up and down and it drives you crazy. And for those geniuses that are gonna come into the comments and try to argue with me and say, oh, but you have to report that you're using the credit card because if you don't, you know, they're gonna, they're gonna take more points away from you. No, that's not true. There are only five factors of credit and activity is not one of them. Them. The five factors of credit are very simple. Payment history, credit utilization, which is the balances that report from your credit cards and only your credit cards, credit age, credit mix, and inquiries. Notice how none of those said anything about activity, but here's the downside. If you don't use your credit card and you stop using it, the credit card company may turn it off because you're not using the credit card. You have to understand something. If they're gonna give you a credit card, the bank actually expects you to use it. If you're not going to use it, then why would they give you the money? They're going to turn it off. It's within their rights. People get upset. They're like, why would they turn on my credit card? I've been with them forever. If you're not going to use the money, they're going to give it to somebody else who will like me. So let's put the breakdown of your credit score up on the screen. I want you to see this chart, pause the video and actually screenshot this and save this to your phone and send it to your friends and send this video to your friends so they can see this. These five categories are what make up your credit score. The reason why your credit score fluctuates so much is because of that credit utilization. Look at the chart right there. Credit utilization makes up 30% of your credit score. 35% of your credit score is payment history, just making sure that you pay on time. That is 65% of your credit score. That's 
why it goes up and down. And that's why if you get a late payment, it's going to tank your credit score. Now let's put this chart up on the screen from FICO. This is an actual breakdown of what your credit score does and how it reacts to that outstanding debt. You see the actual rectangular square here. That is outstanding debt, which is your utilization. The credit card balances that are reporting every single month to the credit reporting agencies. Now remember, everyone's credit profile is going to vary, but it's all about the consistency is what's going to help you squeeze out those points. But if you report zero balance, you're going to get 55 points. If you report one to 6% utilization, you're gonna get 65 points. If you report seven to 19% utilization, you're gonna get 50 points. As you can see, the higher the balances that you report, the more points you're going to lose. But pay attention to that little asterisk right next to the 65. That is minus the actual points that you have already received, which is a maximum of 10 points. Now, I may get the full 10 points, you may only get three, they may only get five, she may they only get six because everyone's credit profile is different. This is why it's important to consistently report zero balance, not next month and then this month you actually reported a balance and then the other month you reported zero, then you went back to reporting a balance. This is why your credit score goes up and down and we're like, oh my God, why did I lose points? Because you're not consistent. Remember what we said earlier, credit is about the ability to repay consistently. Now let's put up the Discover, the Discover Bank statement up on the screen again right here so you can see it. Now my credit score right there is a 7 I usually stay between a 789 and a 796. I can never break through to the 800 club because I continuously add more credit to my credit profile because I'm getting new credit cards, I'm testing them out. But anybody that is in the 800 club will tell you they are consistently reporting a zero balance because it doesn't matter. Once you break through to a certain point, your credit score continues to grow. And the only thing that's gonna make it grow behind it is your age of credit. So this whole thing that you have to report a balance every month or if not your credit score is not going to grow is completely false because once you have hit that consistency streak and you're consistently reporting that zero balance the next thing that falls in line is your age of credit and the only way that your age of credit grows if you stop applying for credit and you let your credit grow slowly that's how people truly break into the 800 club they don't just break into the 800 club overnight i've been doing this for a long time if i truly wanted to i know how i can actually break into the 800 club i'll close some of my credit cards that are very recent and that will shoot me back up because it's gonna lower my average sorry raise my average age of credit okay but i can only do that on my credit profile because i have so many credit cards the average person only carries maybe two to four credit cards so if you close a credit card you're going to have a serious negative impact on your credit profile i will not unfortunately well actually fortunately for me but not for you and let's say hypothetically you're carrying balances on your credit cards and then you start start to pay them down. Once you start to pay them down, you will slowly see your credit score start to increase again. And remember, you wanna get all the way down to zero as many times as you possibly can, continuously and consistently reporting that, and then letting your credit grow with age and your credit score will follow and it will continue to crack into the 800 club. It's truly just that simple. So I hope you enjoyed this video. We covered another big one on how to pay your credit card every month to make your credit score grow consistently. Now make sure that you watch this next video because it is about how to 3x your credit limit with American Express. And if you felt that I brought you some value in this video, make sure that you don't forget and subscribe to increase your credit score.